Uh, we are going to, uh, you may have noticed in the back there, we do have a camera set up. We are trying to work out things so we can put our program back on the air here and, and hopefully sometime this next year. Uh, we haven't been on the prog uh, program for about almost four years. And so we're going to do some in-house things and try to encourage the body of Christ around the city who are not connected to a church to get involved in a church. <laughs> our church. <laughs> and so uh, this is why we're going to pray about it and ask God to help us to make the right decision and uh, use the wisdom of heaven to do so. I want us to turn in our Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and 2. And uh, we're going to look at the, the uh, passage of Scripture in each one of these chapters that will encourage us, I believe. I think today we're going to see some things uh, probably new to our, our thinking just for a few moments. Um, I, I've been reading a book ca called Corrupting the Image. And, and I'm, it's kind of a study that I'm preparing for this next year well, as in the days of Noah. And so, uh, but there's a particular chapter in this book that got my attention and the thought of it, dealing with about the Holy Spirit. And as I was reading this chapter, thoughts just came to my man. That sounds so good. How this all works, and how God is so actively involved in mankind. Because you know God's involved in your life, yes. and He wants you to be involved with His. But that takes a special doing of something in our life. Uh, a, a new creation that needs to take place and this kind of gives us a, a footing on how that happens in Genesis chapter 1 verse uh, 27 it says this and so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them now chapter 2 verse 7 says, And the Lord formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Father, we are so thankful that we can be in this house today to give honor and praise and glory to your name. Lord, open our ears to the, the, the things of the Spirit, what the Word will say and reveal. Let us hear what you are saying to us. Lord, let our mind be illuminated by your Holy Spirit that we'll be able to comprehend and receive knowledge. Lord, let our heart be fertile ground in which the Word takes root and grows that we may become like you. And Lord, for this we give praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Genesis 1, we find a picture that is given to us uh, through the Word about how creation was came about the overview of it and how God spoke it into existence uh, taking things that were not there and then all of a sudden they were there because that's how God works God takes the nothings and makes something it's more like our life too he makes yeah. our nothing and into something I was a nobody at one time just like you were but now in Jesus Christ we are somebody Hallelujah. because yeah. now we become the children of God amen all through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But chapter 1 of Genesis tells us about how God created the heavens, the earth, the, the vegetation, the animals that uh, move across this land, the, the, the fish and the birds, plants and trees, sun, moon, stars, all these things God created and spoke it into existence. He says, let there be. And I said, man, that, that's a powerful word. And then you get down to the last part of this chapter, and, ver and as we read already, that God formed man, created man in his own image. And the, the prize pinnacle of God's creation was Adam. Because he was created in God's image. No other creation was ever created in God's image except Adam. Adam. Our father, if we would say, father of of creation uh, of the human race is Adam. All other creatures, birds, fish, animals, creeping things, all of creation, heavens and earth, star, moon, all up together in these short little verses. That one little chapter tells us all how it came about. But then we see that God begins to expand on how he created man in the last part of chapter 1 and going into chapter 2, giving him the responsibilities of creation, what to do in the garden. And as we see this thing unfold in chapters 1 and 2, we're seeing how God 
is making man a very special creation. When someone tells you you're not special, you need to look at him and says, I am too. God made me. God created me. God gave me life. God gave me breath. And so all of us can say, I'm somebody in Christ and I'm special before God. You are a special creation in Jesus Christ. In this particular verses of scripture that we've read, we're going to see that the unfolding of how man came about in God's eyes and how God worked in his life and how God formed him. In Genesis chapter 2, the primary focus on is on the creation of Adam and the privileges and responsibilities that God gave uh, gave him uh, in the garden. You know, it's a great responsibility to know that God gives you something. Yes. When God gives us something, we need to let it be known that this is what, uh, my responsibility, my stewardship. You may have children. That's a God gift. That's your responsibility. If you have a home or you have possession, those are gifts from God. That's responsibility. Take good care of what God gives you. It's called stewardship. And God gave Adam a stewardship. And he outlined it in chapter 2. And told him what he needed to do, what he shouldn't do. But he also gave a description of how he was made. Let's look at verse chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 again. And it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. This is the history of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Before any plant of the field was in the earth or before any herb of the field had been grown, for the Lord had not caused it to rain on the earth, there was no rain no there was no man to till until there was and there was no man to till the ground. But in the midst but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. And now God created all these things. And at the end of creating all the things that are mentioned in chapter 1, God says, there's no man to till the earth. Look at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. God breathed into Adam. All other creation, creatures of the earth have breath. But there's something special about the breath of God that went into Adam. It wasn't just something ordinary. It was something special. It's God breathed into Adam the breath of life. And when he received that breath Adam became a spiritual living being formed in the likeness of God living thinking being as his creator you might actually say that Adam was the son of God because God formed him from the dust of the earth and breathed into him the breath of life. The man is created into three parts yes. physical, mind, emotions, and spiritual. Here we find that God formed Adam, put him on the ground, formed him, and then he had the physical, had the, the mind, had the knowledge. When God breathed into him, he placed within him the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God breathed His Spirit into Adam. 
That's why you and I have the ability to make choices and decisions, have a conscience, is because the Holy Spirit in our life causes us to think about God. The Holy Spirit outside of our life causes us to realize that we need something more than what we have. Adam lost his relationship with God because of sin. We know the story in chapter 3. We know that he had that indwelling of the Holy Spirit because of sin, though, that the Holy Spirit left. Sin came in and dominated, corrupting the nature of man, but what we might say the DNA of man, because now it became sinful. Adam was created in perfection, but now sin is taking control because he rebelled and sinned against God. It's not God's intent that we live in sin. God provided something better to redeem us from our sins. He promised in Genesis chapter 3 that he would send a redeemer that would come and restore to us what we needed from God. Adam lost it all when he sinned. And that indwelling of the Holy Spirit that was once there when he had walked with God, talked with God, fellowship with God, Things that were so sweet when he can talk to God, his father, the creator of heaven and earth, face to face. Because he was a son of God. Made in his image. But now sin blocked that. And now there's an empty hole in Adam's spirit. And it's because of sin. Mankind today, you and I, when we're born, we're born into sin. Because Adam is the appropriator of our genetic being. When he sinned, his DNA that was once pure and holy before God became corrupted. That's why you have to teach children to be good. That's why we have to have people tell us to obey the law. Yeah. Because without someone telling us, reminding us, or being taught, we're going to do the things that we want to do. Every man in his own eyes, doing his own thing. Sure. And it's wrong, and it's rebellious. It's against the nature of God. Adam lost it all for us. And when he sinned, he had broken fellowship with God, and his corru- the corruption of who he was on the inside begin to take place. Adam literally began to die Mm -hmm. at that point. Now we know Adam lived 960 years. 62 I believe it is. But from the moment he sinned he began to die. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. God breathed in the beginning the breath of life into Adam. Sin distorted that for you and me. But we know that God's not through with us. He's not through with His creation. Did you know God loves His creation? And when the Holy Spirit left the being of man, God filled, had a, there was a God-shaped hole left in man's heart. And God says, I know how to fill that. I know how to bring it about. I want you to look with me back in chapter 2 for a moment, verse 7. And let's look at the form of man just for a moment. We know that man was had the breath of God breathe into him, the very being of who he is. But I found some things interesting I want us to understand about God and how he took time to form his creation. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 he says it was God who brought forth life with his own breath. It's like when someone has died or became unconscious because of suffocation or drowning you know CPR goes into action. Is that not true? You know you start you got to keep pumping the heart till it kicks in and you got to keep blowing breath into the, the lungs. Well, that's exactly in some ways what God would did to Adam when he breathed into him the breath of life. I want you to envision something here for a moment that the person 
that breathed life into him is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the breath of God. He is the Son of God. And all life comes from him. And the Lord God formed man. And, and as we look at the word in the Hebrew and in the Greek, it gives it the meaning of God taking that form of man. Remember it says he took him from the, formed him from the dust of the ground. How many of you liked playing in the mud when you were growing up? Made your mud pies and your castles and your, you shape things. God, and he, even though he spoke creation into existence, he says, I'm going to take time and I'm going to form man from the primal dust of the earth. And I'm going to create him and make him into my image. Can you picture the Lord Jesus taking that that form and just manipulating it, structuring it, declaring it, oh, I like how this arm comes out. Look, I'm going to put muscle in there. Yeah. Or the physique of that person or the, the complexion. Everything that we will see in detail in our own life, Jesus Christ was forming it in Adam to the very forming and perfection of it. Fashioning it like a potter with clay. The Bible says, just for us to know this to be true, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, for the Word was with God. John 1.1 1, 1. Jesus has always been, and Jesus will always be. Amen. And so when we see the image of Adam, we see it also as a mirrored image or a shadow image of Jesus Christ. The reason we don't look like Jesus today sometimes is because of sin. Yes. But when sin is being removed and sin is being taken out of our life, we are going from glory to glory to glory. We're being perfected into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 29 says, and we're being conformed into the image of Christ. So every day when God works in your life, in my life, He is forming us, perfecting us, Renewing, if I could use that word, restoring what sin had distorted and destroyed. Jesus Christ is restoring. He's working on us, needing us, developing us, just like he did with Adam. Perfecting us into the image. And I'm glad God took time with all the details. I'm glad he took time to make us who we are. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 6, we find a picture where the scripture tells us, and if we can turn there real quickly in Jeremiah 18. It gives us a little picture of a potter and the clay. It says this in Jeremiah 18, verse 1, in the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words then I went down to the potter's house and there he was making something at the will and the vessel that he had made that he that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make and in the word of the Lord came to me saying O house of Israel can I not do with you as this potter says the Lord look as the clay is in the hand of the in the potter's hand so you are in my hand O house of Israel and if you want to personalize it you can do that each one of us are as clay in the hands of the potter and the potter is Jesus Christ Amen. and he is making us you know sin marred us sin corrupted us Sin distorted us. But as we come before the Lord Jesus Christ and we put and we allow Him to put us on the wheel, so to speak, and allow Him to begin to reshape us. Because the Bible says there that the potter saw that the product that he had was marred and so he remade it. 
until it was perfected. Well, that's how we are before Christ. We're marred. We're not perfect. And the Lord Jesus Christ puts us upon that wheel and He perfects us and He's forming us and He's changing us, developing us into that image that He designs us to be. And that's what He did with Adam. Formed him into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. He's formed the man. We see it there in verse 7. He's formed Adam. He's laying on the ground. Can you just imagine this for a moment? That Adam is now in the image of his creator. Because it says in his likeness. He's made in his likeness. So he's there laying on the ground and then the Lord himself opens up his nostrils and breath and breathes life. The Lord has quickened us from our sin and deadness of sin. The Lord has taken you out of your sinful nature and breathed the breath of life into you. Because without the breath of life, the life of the breath of God in your life, you are a form of no existence. You are dead in your trespasses, but He has quickened you by His Spirit. In other words, made you alive. Isn't that great. He breathed the breath of life into your spirit. But here's Adam. He's just laying on the ground and the God breathes the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, into his life. And then Adam opens his eyes. And he has face to face with his Creator. I imagine Adam was pretty excited. It wasn't just a spark of life like all the other creations. It was the Holy Spirit that brought life into the person of Adam. That's how Adam was able to talk with God, walk with God, fellowship with God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit enabled Adam to walk and talk with God and to be formed into his image. The working, the perfecting, the movement, everything about Adam is exactly like his creator because of the working and the breath of life of the Holy Spirit in him. See the picture how it is with us? When we allow the Holy Spirit to actively be manifested in our life, we begin to walk and talk and think and be like our Creator. And that's exactly what God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be stuck in our old sinful nature. He doesn't want us to be stuck in a pattern of death and destruction. He wants us to receive the breath of life through the Holy Spirit and live. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that life more abundantly. And Jesus did the very same thing to his disciples and to all who have faith in him. The Bible says in John chapter 20, verse 22, that Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room and as he was there, he says... Well, let's just read it. John chapter 20, verse 22. And Jesus said to them, and he breathed on them. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. What sin had taken out from man in Adam and disrupted the relationship that he had with God, Jesus Christ by his resurrection and by the authority that he had from the Father has breathed life back into those, the Holy Spirit, the the life of God for those who have faith in him. When we come to Christ and we confess our sins and we acknowledge that we were dead in our sins, the Holy Spirit is breathed upon us and comes into our being that we now are no longer the old 
but we have come the new. If any man, woman, boy, or girl be in Christ Jesus, they are a new creation because of the breath of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God being breathed upon us. He breathed in them that breath of life and said to them, Receive! And today the Holy Spirit is saying, Receive! Receive this breath of life and live. And the Greek word for, for breathe in chapter 20 of John, verse 22 that we read, and also in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Greek word is the same. And here's what it means. The Greek word for breathe or in breath is the same word. In other words, what God did back then is what He does today. Those who, the, for those who receive him by faith. In Thayer's Greek lexicon, it says this, just as the original creation was completed by an act of God, so too the new creation was completed by an act from the head of the new creation, which is Jesus Christ. He breathed the breath of life, the Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. Verse 15. I want you to see a verse here with me. Galatians 6, verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of the new creation. You and I in Christ are that new creation. And Jesus is our head. Adam was the only human being at the time that he was created. It was directly created by God. Therefore, he's called the Son of God. But how does that affect us today? I wasn't directly formed by God. I, I've had many, many generations of, of ancestry before I came into existence. How do I, and now according to Scripture, become a Son of God? Turn with me to John chapter 1, verse 12. And we begin to see the truth of God unfold before us. John chapter 1, verse 12. And it says that he came to his own and his own received him not. That's verse 11. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name, who were not born of blood, nor of the will of man, or of the flesh, but of God. The Holy Spirit drew you to the person of Christ one day. Because no man can come to the Father except by the Spirit that draws him. The Holy Spirit revealed to you at one point in your life that you needed something inside of you that you did not have. And that was the life and breath of God through the Holy Spirit. He revealed your need of Christ and only Christ can give you what you are needing in your life. And so it's the will of the Father as He speaks to you and draws you to Him that you become that new creation. That's why He draws you to Him. Because he desires you to be his son, to be his daughter. Because it's not by the will of man or will of the flesh, the will of God. The will of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, is that none should perish, but all should have everlasting life. Amen. So he's calling those who are here to come and those who come and receive. He gives life. Just like he gave life to Adam in the Holy Spirit. He dwells within us. And now we become sons of God. Daughters of God. Galatians 3, 26. For, all, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. You cannot become like God through New Age movements 
or philosophies or teachings. You cannot become a son or a daughter of God by your own ability. It's only through the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. And He breathes that into us every day as we yield ourselves to Him. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8 verses 15 and 16. And let's find another passage of Scripture that will encourage us. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received a, the spirit of adoption whereby we cry out Abba Father for the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God by faith we receive the, the, the adoption in other words we be, become part of God's family and he breathes in us his life we become partakers of what he has given. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit who is from God. Who is from God? The spirit who is from God. The Holy Spirit. Galatians 4, 6 says, And because you are sons of sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Because you have received Him by faith, God the Father sends His Spirit into your life. Romans 8, 11 declares this, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The same spirit that breathed life into Adam. The same Spirit who breathes life into those who have faith in Christ. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead will also raise you up one day and you will be with Him forever. The same breath of God. The same Spirit of God. We become sons of God by believing in Jesus Christ. It's not by works. Lest any man should boast. It's by faith. Believing that he died for our sins. Believing that he's the one who gives us life and life everlasting. You think of that scripture in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. See Adam in the beginning was created to live. Amen. Yeah. Never die. <coughs> Adam was created to have fellowship and communion and life with the creator for eternity but because of sin that was shortened but I got news today because of Christ died on the cross we can have that relationship restored and we can live with him for eternity hallelujah for we can live and move and have our being in him we can have that fellowship that he desires all because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The work of the cross. And we must not forget the cross. It can be a place of sorrow for some, but it's not for me. It's a place of victory. It's a place of restoration. It's a place of renewal. 
Because on that cross, God had a plan to restore my sinful life into the nature that God originally wanted me to have, and that is a new and divine nature in Him. No longer to suffer death and pain, but to have life and freedom from all the things of sin. The cross becomes the victorious place for everyone who believes. And it's on that cross when Jesus Christ said, It is finished! He said the plan is completed and everyone ever since then who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved is renewed, is restored, is receiving that life of the Holy Spirit in them and they are becoming the sons and the daughters of God that God wants them to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what was lost in the beginning God has restored through His cross. Jesus came to restore our image to replace our old broken, corrupted DNA and transfuse us with the DNA of heaven. One day we shall be like Him. Because that's what the scripture says. In 1 John chapter 3 it says, Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. We will come face to face with our Creator. Thank you, Jesus. Not in a corruptible state, but in an incorruptible state. That's why Paul said, the mortal will take on immortality, the corruptible will take on incorruption when we stand before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All because he breathed the breath of life. You know, and he's still breathing today, folks. He is still calling out to those who are dead in their sin, dead in their trespasses. He's willing and ready right now to breathe the breath of life into all who will call upon him. Even for us who have been walking with God, maybe we feel a little short of breath. Once we let God breathe into our spirit, And just renew us. And strengthen us. Let's ask Him to do that now. Father, send Your Holy Spirit in the power of heaven, the glory of Your name. Breathe life into every person that is in this building. May the breath of life, the breath of the Holy Spirit indwell each person in this place right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That we're no longer dead to our sin, no longer trespassers, but made alive and quickened by the Spirit of God to become children of God. Sons and daughters no longer destined for death, but now destined for life and life everlasting with you. Holy Spirit, thank you for breathing the life of heaven in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me life. Thank you for removing my corruptibleness and transforming me into the image of who you are, the creator of heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord, that you are working mightily in our life to perfect us. And for this, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we stand and just give God praise for the breath of life? Can we give Him glory for transforming us, making us new creations today? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for removing our old sinful nature and replacing it with the divine nature. Thank you, Lord, for taking the corruptible, making it incorruptible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you for redeeming me from the, from the pit of sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. And we're made in your likeness, being restored to the full image that we were created. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord Lord, Jesus. Thank you, you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Come on, church, sing it together. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me. Thy great salvation so rich and free. It's all because of Him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. Let God be praised in every breath you take. Yeah. And remember, the breath that you have is given to you by Him. Walk in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Walk in the fullness of God. And be who God has created you to be. God bless you. Greet each other in Christ. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock, for a great time in the Lord. God bless you.